computer. Okay, so this is November 2021 Sydney lecture, and we'll go ahead and get started if you want to put your slides up or do your intro. Okay, um, good morning, everybody. Now it is some um, the morning time in Hong Kong, and I believe that it's about the noon time. Uh, mm -hmm. in Australia. Yeah, okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to extend my uh, gratitude to uh, my some invitation. I'm really honored to join this um, uh, Sydney lecture. Um, I'm Christine Huang, Chair Professor of um, Communication and Media at the um, City University of Hong Kong. Um, it is my great pleasure uh, to be here to share with you um, the topic, uh, tales and lessons of my academic journey when East meets West. And I noticed that uh, quite a few of um, the students here actually have a very diversified cultural background. So I think uh, maybe um, um, the topic would be uh, quite relevant to uh, most of you. Um, I would like to share my uh, flow of um, talk. Okay, yeah. Um, since um, I will be uh, talking about my academic journey, so I think um, it would make sense um, to uh, introduce myself a little bit. And um, after that, I will uh, talk about um, um, four approaches to Chinese communication research and um, which will lay um, foundations for my research uh, approach and help you to understand how I approach when I am um, doing research because you know I will share with you um, um, the general or the main um, 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 topic of my research program later and uh, basically to theorize some Chinese um, perspective of um, populations or strategic communications uh, is one of my major concern. And during the talk, I would like to also, you know, uh, talk about some crossroad um, challenges that I have encountered. And I will share with you my puzzles and how I address them. And one remark to note is that there is no such thing as you know, one and the only answers. Okay, to me, I've never believed in you know ha having a one and the only answer in life, in research, and in everything, because I believe that everything has um, is a matter of choices. Okay, everything has its trade off, and um, everything you know depends on uh, what you want. So. Um, so that is um, basically uh, my premise about, you know, uh, 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 the attitude when we have um, uh, encountered um, crossroad, especially, you know, in, um, in, in during the courses of doing research. And I will share some of my research experiences. I list them, um, you know, uh, five topics here. Uh, I don't know if I have time to go off them. But um, I would really, uh, uh, eat, I'm really eager to share uh, what I have learned from um, my academic journey with all of you. And um, so, um, um, uh, advised by Michael, um, I might stop in the middle of my talk to entertain some questions. But um, uh, you are very welcome to not down um, your questions, um, um, and I can always get back at the at the end of um, um, the the presentation, and then you know we can refer to some of the slides that cannot be fully elaborated elaborated because you know, I prepare a lot. Maybe, maybe you know more than enough, and then I would um, uh, wrap up um, the talk by uh, giving uh, my uh, suggested takeaways uh, for the future generation uh, for the future research. So, um, um, okay, I grew up in Taiwan, and then I got my master and PhD degree in at the University of Maryland in the United States. 
and then okay and after that i uh, i get back to um 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 taiwan to teach and um 2008 i uh came to um, hong kong to teach at chinese university of hong kong and to, uh, 2021 january i joined city university of hong kong so um as you can see that um 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 I mainly teaches in the field of um, communication uh, in Taiwan, uh, Zhengzhou University and Chinese University of Hong Kong and City University of Hong Kong in the field of public, uh, in the field of communication. However, however, um, um, I'm sorry that. Oh, I think um, we should, we have to use that otherwise. I'm sorry, because, um, okay, okay. Yeah, I have to change to the other mode. Otherwise um, that cannot just, um, because I, I, uh, I prepare quite a few um, slides and um, I hide some of them, but if I use them the other mode, you know, I just, the, 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 the floor just cannot be, um, smoothly uh, transferred. Okay, so I also um, taught um, regularly at business school. Um, yeah, just as I mentioned that I um, teach beyond the field of um, communication and um, the program I've been teaching uh, uh, include um, MBA, EMBA, and some um, executive um, um, programs at business school because my, prep, uh, my premise is that um, uh, professionalism of public relations can be achieved by good educations towards um, um, senior managements um, in, in, in the corporations or the organizations. So actually I've been devoted quite a lot um, teaching in a business school in, uh, for this purpose. And also I uh, serve as a visiting scholars a program of a program on negotiation and Harvard University and um, at the program of um, peace and conflict studies at um, UC Berkeley. So this um, diagram basically depicts um, 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 my research and teaching areas, which combine three components. One is communication, and the second one is management, and the, the third one is um, conflict resolution and negotiation. So I would uh, 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 position my research and teaching uh, to um, interdisciplinary to some extent. And um, I would like to um, describe my research program as to uh, theorize management of strategic communication from the perspective of conflict resolution in Chinese societies or Chinese contexts. And um, as we all know that theory actually are designed to um, describe, to uh, explain and to predict uh, realities, okay? But my puzzle or what have been uh, interests, um, my research has, you know, have been that, you know, um, whether or not, or to what extent, that the um, Western theories of communication or public relations can really shed light to predict, to describe, and to explain the public relations um, uh, uh, practice in my home country, okay, that is um, the Chinese societies. So that can help me to develop uh, my dream, that is to theorize Chinese theory of public relations. So, um, so, that is um, the main topic. And um, what I want to share with you is that, you know, I would like to share with you my academic journey, okay, uh, to the West, back and start afresh. So I uh, would really hope that, you know, um, uh, this talk can uh, shed light to um, uh, some of you, some current research. Okay, so uh, before I move on or start to share my uh, re uh, research experiences in uh, public relations, I would like to uh, talk about um, my um, studies in the topic of um, four approaches to Chinese communication research. 
because you know just as I, I mentioned previously that you know, um, that laid the foundations for me to do research or to uh, theorize um, Chinese theories of populations. I actually uh, have done some intensive um, literature review on the topic of um, Chinese um, communication research and published an article uh, uh, entitled Chinese Communication Research, okay, Research Approaches, Debates, consensus and a development of theor uh, theoretical assumptions. And um, let me summarize that, you know, um, the core of the debate on Chinese communication research is about whether to establish a universal or global centric theory, okay, or unique local centric theory and how. So um, to address this um, uh, question, um, I summarized or I identified four approaches uh, in the existing literature to Chinese communication studies. And that could shed light when I theorized um, the so-called Chinese theories of um, populations and strategic communication. So the four approaches um, can be identified as follows. The first one is some um, cultural general approaches which refers to communication studies that aim to establish theoretical universality. And the second approach is um, um, a culture specific approach that refers to communication studies that emphasize Chinese locality and uniqueness. And the third approach is some um, comparative perspective, which you know, uh, covers communication studies that compare the East and the West in a broad sense. And the, the last one is the intercultural communication that refers to communication studies that explore integrations of two or more cultures. And then I use this um, diagram, I developed this diagram to uh, depict the, um, um, the four approaches to Chinese communication studies and their relationship. And as you can see that um, the first one is some um, uh, culture general approaches, okay? And the, the second one is culture specific. And it be, in between, when you, you know, emphasize on um, explore the integrations between two cultures, you know, I would call that intercultural approaches. And if you emphasize on comparing um, um, different cultures, okay, especially if you general, in a broad sense, that is like West or the East, that we call that comparative approach. So this, uh, frame, this framework um, basically guide my um, research journeys when I am um, 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 doing my um, research on strategic communication or public relations. Now let's move on to um, um, what I just mentioned about you know, sharing my research experiences on public relations. And um, this can be traced back to long time ago when I commit myself uh, to um, 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 decide public relations as um, my uh, major research area and teaching area. But at that time, you know, um, um, questions occurred is, you know, um, um, so what is public relations? Because different people defined it differently. And, you know, how can public relations be studied and uh, researched? And how can public relations be taught? Actually, these are like you know uh, questions. Um, at um, I, I I won't you know address how long ago, but actually that that was a, like you know common questions all um the public relations scholars and researchers ha researchers have encountered. So um, um, is public relations persuasion, advocacy, public information, conflict resolution, or communication in general, or is it you know uh, relationship management, uh, image reputation management, or cause related public relations? So um, 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 to answer all these questions, okay, I started my journey. Okay, as I just mentioned that I went to um, University of Maryland in the United States to, um, to study public relations. And at that time, I think um, it was very interesting because it, even at, at, at that time in the United States, and I, when I read uh, 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 the textbook and the journal articles at the time, there are 
bunch of um, definitions and um, a, a textbook said that there are a total of uh, 472 public relations definitions. But actually I, do, I did not find you know, um, an integrated analytical framework in the existing literature at that time, long time ago. So I asked myself that, can I construct a comprehensive but integrated framework to describe public relations, okay? So um, um, that was actually one of um, the main tasks and um, 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 you know, um, areas of um, uh, uh, directions of my um, studies uh, during my uh, PhD uh, study. Okay, so um, I, I uh, have done some literature review and then developed an article uh, published after I graduated. Okay, the, the title is On Major Approaches to Western Public Relations Theories, Com Competition and Debates of Theoretical Perspective in 1990s. And okay, this is my summary. Okay, maybe, you know, um, um, not comprehensive enough, but based upon what I studied at that time, I conceptualized some three major theoretical perspective of public relations. One is managerial perspective, and the second one is rhetorical or critical perspective. And the third one at that time is integrated marketing communication. And I use um, you know, um, um, different uh, 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 categories to uh, compare these three major perspectives, such as some um, scholars, their main works. Uh, um, okay. I won't go into details about everything here because some, um, you know, uh, time constraints. But um, um, I would, um, you know, just briefly uh, show my um, conceptualizations at that time for your easy reference. If you are interested, we can, of, of course, we can get back here. So I also, you know, um, uh, conceptualize that by um, um, definition of public relations, nature of the problems to be resolved and contents of populations and practice and objectives of populations or views and social role of populations. And um, there are different definitions um, about the effects of mass communication and how they define publics or the audiences and um, the theories developed. So uh, I said that, you know, I don't uh, want to spend time today here to elaborate uh, in terms of the details of um, the three perspective of public relations, but I can uh, um, conclude that in a nutshell, okay, these three uh, theoretical perspective of public relations and theory basically uh, were all uh, developed under the paradigm of um, communication in 1990s. Okay. So I would, um, you know, adopting the framework that I just introduced, okay, I would um, um, conceptualize it or categorize some these three perspectives under cultural general approaches, okay. The challenge that I faced is that, okay, was that after I went back to the United States to teach in Chinese societies, at that time it's in Taiwan, I actually encounter uh, an issue that is, okay, just, you know, as I just uh, explained to you that, you know, I thought that theories um, uh, are uh, designed to um, describe, explain and predict, you know, the realities. But, you know, the question that I encounter is that do the theories that I learned in the Western uh, societies or Western literature really truly apply to describe, explain, and predict uh, populations in um, the Chinese societies that I am situated? Okay. Let me show you some pictures of populations in Taiwan at that time that are quite different from what I've learned in the United States, okay? So these are some uh, aspects that you may refer to, okay? The, the first one is um, the so-called PR princess or Miss PR, okay? So this is what a PR princess or Miss PR have been doing. So, you know, you can uh, just um, conceptualize it or understand it as like a you know, bar girl and the job description for the Miss PR or like a PR princess is like, you know, 
uh, easy money, easy task, and uh, close home. Okay, and um, the second the second picture of um, public relation practice in Taiwan at that time is pooling guanxi or the pooling uh, personal networks. Okay, so guanxi is the um, uh, uh, can be uh, considered or and uh, can be understood. Uh, um, um, as like you know, personal networks or personal uh, interpersonal relationship, and Guanxi actually, I, as most of you uh, understand, um, the Chinese culture or East uh, Asian culture, Guanxi is very important in the society. And there is a term says that you know, 有关系就没关系，没关系就有关系。Actually, it um. Uh, the translation is that okay. If you have a personal networks or important uh, uh, relationship, okay, nothing would be a big deal. But if you do not have it, okay, anything could be a big deal. Okay, so pooling guanxi uh, becomes very important in the practice of uh, public relations at that time. And the th the third picture or aspect, you know, I think as a lot of you understand is like, you know, sales of promotions or the media exposures. So um, 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 facing this some um, kind of discrepancies, okay? Uh, the discrepancies um, between the West and the East or the discrepancies between the theories and practice, um, well, the crossroad questions that I encounter would be that, that, you know, are this kind of um, discrepancies sensible? Should I really look into the discrepancies? Or even could this be a topic of my dissertation? Okay, so I don't know what you uh, consider or what you approach is um, 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 the, do you have any answers? Anyone want to? Uh, answer the questions about that? Do you consider um, this, this discrepancies between the East and the, the, the West or the theories and the practice sensible? Or should I really look into the discrepancies? Or could this become a topic of my research? I think it's a very good uh, vintage point to actually use some theories outside of public relations to answer those questions where you can intersect uh, with intercultural communication or um, or even global communication theories to, you know, using that theoretical lens to examine public relations. And that would be a really great topic as a intersection to, you know, for, for this right. theory. Thanks, Alvin. Okay, that's really a very good question. But I have to be honest with you. Okay, when I actually look at um, 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 the discrepancies at that time, since I'm actually I uh, after I obtained my master's degree, I uh, went back to Taiwan and I teach. I actually at teach before I um, at universities before I went back to the United States to pursue my 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 doctoral degree. Okay, so um, this was the questions that I faced at that time because you know when I taught public relations at that time, uh, students might reflect that you know well, the theory is actually you know does not work. You know this is not the case in the reality. Okay, but you know um, um, this um, uh, crossroad question actually to me uh, 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 was a puzzle, and you know just as some um, Alvin just some um, suggest that you know I. Um, I indeed uh, 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 consider or like, you know, um, um, think it hard about several questions like this, okay? One is that in the Western theory, okay, it says that public relations contribute to organizational effectiveness by helping to build stable quality and long-term relationship over time. So if that is the case, okay, and a lot of um, public relations um, theories at that time actually uh, adopt communication theories as um, the groundwork to develop public relations theory. So are communication and re relationship the same thing? Okay, at that time, you know, I started to, you know, talk about this and, you know, I asked myself, are the theories that we adopted from the domain or the paradigm of communication really per pertinent 
Okay, this is one thing that I thought at that time. Mm -hmm. And the, the second thing is that, you know, my observations in the Chinese society, just as I mentioned, that Guanxi is very important, but is um, the Guanxi equivalent to the in interpersonal relationship or the so-called relationship in um, the Western theories, okay? And the other observation that I highlighted here is that, you know, in Taiwan, the fights in Congress, you know, becomes a very hot or heated topic at that time. Let me provide you um, with some background at that, okay? Since um, 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 in Taiwan, uh, there are like, you know, uh, um, executive branches and uh, legislators, okay? So um, 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 in on TV or especially, you know, the fights, you know, I mean, not only oral fights, but also physical fights, okay, happen quite a lot in the Congress. And that became, you know, the front line or, you know, the headlines um, in um, um, uh, the local and international news, okay? And actually we know that um, um, the congressional liaisons in the executive or in the administrative branches, you know, uh, did uh, quite a lot or, you know, uh, uh, pay, uh, much efforts um, building a relationship with um, the legislators and their assistance in um, the uh, in in the legislator in the legislative um, branches. But my questions um, uh, came up. Okay, that is so. If the, so much effort has been paid on the public relations um, effort to build a relationship with um, the legislators, how come the you know the results are so negative? Okay, so um, that brought up to my um, next question. Okay, that is, um, could this be a topic for my doctoral dissertation? Okay, and could, could, could um, you know, this would be a place that just as um, Alvin just um, mentioned, would, would this be the interaction between um, uh, the West or the East in terms of theories and the practice? And um, um, if um, I consider relationship and the communication are not exactly the same thing, okay, uh, would the organization public relationships uh, can be measured and could that be a good topic? Okay, so um, that uh, uh, brought me to um, um, the topic on um, 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 the experience um, that I would like share with you about, you know, uh, organization public relations assessment. So um, this is um, the topic of my uh, doctoral dissertation, public relations strategies, relational outcomes, and conflict management strategies. Okay, so um, this is my initial conceptual model. Okay, as you can see that I propose to study, I'm oh, sorry, I propose to study the in, uh, relationship between an organization's public relations strategy, okay, and their effects on um, the conflict strategies adopted by its counter publics, okay, through the mediation of um, relationship. Okay, so, uh, I draw the literatures from public relations and identify five dimensions of public relations strategies. And I draw from um, uh, literatures on conflict resolution and I identify four conflict management strategies. And the, the major problem came to me is that how to measure organization public relationship. So I, uh, did quite intensive literature review from the perspective of um, international international relationship, interpersonal relationship, organizational relationship, and even um, intimate relationship. Okay, and then I uh, identified these four uh, measures. Okay, that is some um, control mutuality, trust, relational satisfaction, and commitment. I believe that uh, all of you have uh, very familiar with them. Um, this um, four relational characteristics. Okay, so I am so I um, uh, adopt um, 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 the scales. Okay, um, with some um, high reliabilities and uh, well established um, scales, and then to um, 
conduct um, empirical studies to do um, surveys. Okay, let me explain this to you. Okay, so um, this is some um, the first um, independent study that. Uh, not independent, yeah, uh, a, a study that I conducted for my dissertation. So I conducted a survey to the members and assistant um, in the legislative Yuan in Taiwan, okay? And um, the second method is to conduct 30 in-depth interview. And um, um, the number of valid responses um, is um, about 300, okay, response rate is okay, okay, uh, about 45 and uh, 54, things like that. But actually, I encounter a, 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 a major issue is that, is that um, my respondents responded to me and, you know, uh, uh, complain, actually, they complained to me that, okay, Ms. Huang, the scales that you adopted to um, interview us, okay, or in the survey questions, actually is not, are not valid to reflect my relationship with um, the congressional liaisons, okay? And this is a quote from them, okay? Okay, one of um, the legislator explained to me that the real thing in the relationship is the extent to which I will consider to render a face to the congressional liaisons to make them look good. And I also take into account the extent to which they will really return the favor when I need something. So this comes to another crossroad question. So what does that mean? Should I really, again, look into the discrepancies? based upon um, you know, the complaints from the respondents, or should I just ignore them and you know, go ahead with them, the research routine? Because everybody would say that, well, or a lot of um, people would say that, well, the so-called um, um, you know, um, 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 the face thing or like the favor thing actually are behind the table and they are not you know, um, the subjects should be included in the research agenda. So, you know, we should not really study that. We should just go ahead by using the re research routine, by using, you know, the uh, scales or the research um, questionnaires uh, with them high reliability and validities. So what should I do? Okay, actually I have to admit uh, with you that at that time, I indeed encountered this kind of puzzle. And, um, you know, so should, which way should I go? Which way should I go, okay? And as most of you have um, known that, okay, eventually I stop. I actually just quit my um, 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 surveys, okay? At that time, the, the questionnaire that I developed. And then I went back to doing research again, doing research again, especially I, at this time, I do not, um, consult or doing um, the research literature, uh, the literature review from Western literature. I look at a lot of um, literature conducted by um, indigenous psychologists. Okay, since um, um, the in indigenous psychologists, um, you know, they explore um, this area of um, 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 questions from the perspective of face and favor. Okay, face and favor. And as you can see that I highlighted here, uh, ren qing, okay, face and means, ren qing yu means, okay, were defined as a kind of resources exchange in a relationship. And Chinese regards face and favor as a medium on the courses of um, social exchanges. And let me um, give you a little bit, you know, more um, um, explanations from the perspective of Guan Xi or face and favor in terms of their uh, definition. Actually, Guan Xi is um, essentially a utilitarian concept and it's in form of a um, psychological contract between and among contending parties in a relationship given. And it is a practice, okay, in a long-term orientation um, um, concept, okay? And Guan Xi is collective and it's both um, subjective and 
um, sorry, an objective. Okay. So considering that, I finally decided that I will include these five relational measures to reflect the reality and to entertain um, um, the responses or the uh, the questions raised by the, respond, uh, the by the respondents. Okay, so this comes to the revised conceptual model. Okay, so I add the fifth component into um, the um, the relationship um, measurement. Okay, so uh, as I I, I um, 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 just mentioned that four relational characteristics were adopted from the Western literature, that is control mutuality, trust and satisfaction and commitment, and one oriental concept, okay, entitled or uh, um, uh, named as some um, face and favor, and um, um, that was adopted from uh, um, East, um, uh, Eastern, um, well, Eastern um, literature. And then, um, let me get back to this, study, okay, this some um, description again. So I conducted, uh, go back to um, the research site and um, took a lot of effort interviewing uh, these um, legislators and their uh, assistants. And actually I literally uh, lived, okay, lived in the legislative Yuan it took me about like at least um, four months, day and night, you know, chasing this um, the important figures of um, the legislators and um, their assistants, begging them to uh, answer and fill out the questionnaire and uh, receive um, my um, uh, uh, my interviews. Okay. Anyway, so um, that uh, okay, and then um, I, I I would. Uh, go very quickly because um, I then using a structure equational modeling to uh, uh, analyze some of the data, okay, the model fit, model comparisons, you know, uh, reliability test, validity test, okay, and then um, come up with my final, come up with my final um, conceptual and uh, theoretical model. And if I can uh, uh, again adopt um, the diagram that I just show you, um, I would I would put it in this way that you know I take into account the culture specific approaches and add that into um, the culture general approaches. Okay, to generate okay or to theorize my um I'm sorry okay my uh uh, uh and produce my um two journal articles, okay, um, um, based upon my um, doctoral dissertation. And as I just mentioned that, you know, after my um, um, uh, completed my uh, doctoral dissertation, I, conduct, I conducted a second study, okay, using similar um, um, survey question um, uh, 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 scales, okay? But this time I surveyed two congressional liaisons, okay? And then I use these two independent data to cross-validate, okay? The theoretical framework that I generated and then produce um, these two um, um, articles, okay? And um, the research impact, uh, especially for the OPRA, uh, model, okay, a cross-cultural multi-dimension scales for measuring organization public relationship, okay. Uh, this article won top paper award and won best article award in public relations scholarship awarded by uh, National Communication Association for that year. And um, the OPIA measure actually has been well received internationally because um, it successfully stimulated and inspired scholars and students throughout the world to replicate and test the model, especially, you know, a, a lot of um, scholars, you know, reflected to me that, you know, they wonder and they are curious, you know, how the face and favor is practiced in their home country. 
because they do think that you know the face and favor exercises or the practice actually exist in their countries as well. And as of from um, uh, 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 you know a week ago, the Google citation of the article has reached you know over five hundred. So I would say that you know um, um, again adopting this um, diagram, I would think that you know. Um, um, the scale actually has, um, you know, uh, move on to the comparative approaches um, um, so far. Okay, now, um, based upon, based upon um, um, the, the study, I would say that that study regard, regarded as um, one of um, the forerunners of the paradigm shift from communication management to relationship management and dialogic theories in the field of public relations from 1990s to 20, okay? So um, here, I will really want to um, 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 acknowledge and want to, you know, extend my gratitude to um, the theories developed by uh, Michael and Maureen uh, on the dialogic theory because um, this, th this theory and this perspective has been cited as, you know, a major uh, 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 um, perspective in the field of public relations in um, uh, 20, uh, uh, 2000 and, um, you know, uh, 20, up to now, okay. So, and this is the quote that um, I cited um, Maureen and uh, uh, um, Michael's works in my recent article. Okay, I says that the dialogic theory described, you know, um, any um, no negotiated exchange of ideas and op opinions. And it asserted that you know, the end result do not, um, determine the value of public relations. Rather, the value lies in the ongoing process of building and maintaining relationship, even at the price of um, stability, predictability, and profit in other areas. So um, I would think that, you know, to answer back to my questions, so would uh, communication and relationship, you know, I mean the same thing? I think, you know, after uh, the year 20, uh, 2000, Okay, up to now, I will consider that um, I use this um, diagram to um, um, indicate um, the paradigm shift from communication to relationship and dialogic um, theories. Okay, so um, I, and then I would, how um, much time was it? Okay. Okay, and then I would like to uh, uh, give them um, the next five minutes to talk about, you know, um, an integrated model of public relations value assessment. Okay, so based upon uh, my um, previous um, two articles on uh, OPRA and uh, public relations value, okay, I developed another article called the Integrated Model of Public Relations Value Assessment, PRVA published in um, 2012, okay? So um, um, I use this integrated model of public relations to identify a uh, two level, five aspects measuring public relations um, 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 uh, 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 values, okay? So um, the, the so-called two level model of public relations value, the first level refers to public relations effectiveness and that, uh, which uh, consists of um, three dimensions. Uh, that is a media publicity or exposure and uh, organize OPR and reputation. And the, the second level refers to organizational effectiveness. Okay, that includes revenue generation and cost reduction. And as you know, I won't go into details about that because um, I believe that, you know, uh, uh, quite of you have already read that um, article. So for the media uh, publicity, Okay, uh, if we define public relations value from like, you know, media publicity that in that refers to, you know, quantity and qualities of a media placement, publicity violence, media reach, tone, sentiment, favorability, headline, exclusivity, influencers, size, things like that. Okay, this is some um, the first perspective. And the, the second pers perspective is that, you know, I distinguish uh, the differences between image perception and rep reputation 
And um, the reputation is defined as um, the aggregate perceptions of an organization, which includes some, um, you know, supporting good causes, maintaining high standards and environmentally responsive, okay, and, um, and offering high quality product and services. And the third one is um, relationship. And um, these five um, relational uh, 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 construct has been uh, introduced uh, a few minutes ago. And the third one, and um, the fourth one is, you know, uh, defining public relations from organizational uh, effectiveness, especially revenue generations um, resulting from business and sales, stock values, financial performance, and return on investment. And the last one is that you know I've been um, advocate and um, advocating and you know emphasize a lot is to define public relations value from the perspective of um, cost reduction, because a lot of costs result result from uh, pub, uh, public complaints, lawsuit oppositions, and I believe that you know one of um, our our uh, students here. Okay, and, and uh, um, saying that you know activism is um, the topic of um, her, her dissertation. So um, um, this is some um, the the the, the uh, uh, areas that I really think you know um, are very important for the future and the existing direction of um, population theories. Okay, because my major premise premise is that you know a meaningful amount of population effectiveness might remain unaccounted for when only media publicity and revenue generation are taken into account, okay? So um, I really think that, you know, as a population, some educators and uh, researchers, we should explore a uh, population's values from a cost reduction um, perspective. Okay, I think, um, 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 I, don't, I don't know how much time that I have right now, but you know, if um, time allows, I really you know would be um, um, really want to share with you um, another thing um, that I've been doing uh, recently. Especially, mm -hmm. I adopt um, 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 the model uh, of engagement produced by Maureen and Johnson. Okay, in their book. So, uh, so, so, Michael, how much time do I have? Can you can I have? Yeah, you're fine. It's it's your you're about an hour in, so you can keep going. You're fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. So um um um, I would like to really uh 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 share with you what I've been doing, and you know I feel excited that you know um another area of um 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 uh, my uh current um uh uh research, okay, on engagement. So um, this this what I call the engagement model with some cultural sensitivity, and um, um, okay, as you can see that okay, I adopt um, the definition from uh, uh, Maureen and um, uh, Johnson and Taylor, okay, twenty eighteen, um, 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 and developed um, um, further developed um, you know the so called ABC model of engagement. Okay, so uh, Johnson and Taylor, okay, they uh, define uh, engagement as a dynamic, multidimensional relational concept featuring psychological and behavior attributes of connection, interaction, participation, and involvement designated to achieve or elicit an outcome at individual organization or societal level. And based upon their, um, research, I uh, kind of like, you know, developed this so-called ABC model of um, engagement. And as you can see that um, 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 this model, um, um, in this model, several important features are emphasized, okay? The first one is that engagement is a relational concept that emphasizes to build relational set uh, characteristics, okay? And I emphasize that you know trust, commitment, satisfaction, and control mutuality between an organization and its stakeholders. Okay. Secondly, um, this model emphasizes to achieve okay the goal of um, maintaining connection, interaction, participation, and involvement between an organization and its stakeholder. 
And the, the third one, and the, the third one is that, okay, according to the book, okay, engagement is a state that consists of cognitive, affective, and behavior dimensions. Okay, and the, the detailed definitions of these three uh, engagement, okay, three dimensions of the engagement is that cognitive engagement describe an investment in attention, processing, or thinking skills to develop understanding or knowledge. And effective engagement describe emotional states and reactions incorporating both positive and negative emotional conditions such as enjoyment, fear, belongings, or repulsions. And the third one is some um, behavior engagement captures activities associated with some um, engagement such as interaction, actions, and, and usually that is measured, okay, by like, you know, um, a single experience such as um, uh, a visit to a website, things like that. And, and um, well, if you, you know, uh, actually I have a lot of video to share and maybe, you know, I will just share with them a, 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 a video with you. And I believe that is um, quite interesting, okay? And this is, you know, to, um, um, uh, to illustrate um, uh, cognitive engagement, okay? And um, this is developed by Dolph International. And the background is that, you know, they want to help women develop a positive relationship with the way they look because, um, because um, the background is that around the world, women are not feeling confident in their beauty. Among women who talk to Dolph, 61% in the United States, 86% in China, 56% in India, 96 in the UK, percent in the UK and 72% in the Brazil admitted that they are anxious about the way they look. So how to raise some women's self-esteem and realize their full potential is the goal of um, this campaign. And okay, just as you know, like, um, you know, entertainment, I know I would like to show you, and then I will go back to, you know, the way that I um, theorize my um, model of um, like a um, culturally sensitive um, model of ABC. Okay, let's look at um, the... Again. It was my choice. And now I will question myself for the next few weeks, maybe months. We had an option of two pathways to walk, and they led to two doorways. It was a bit confronting, actually, to be honest, to see these big signs and feeling like you had to choose and be self-conscious of how you perceive yourself and perhaps if it lines up with how the rest of the world perceives you. I went through the average door. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I didn't even hesitate. Pyongyang to me, is like, uh, uh, like, uh, like, 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 of what's constantly bombarded at me, what I'm being told that I should accept, or am I choosing because that's what I really believe? I walked into that door which said average and I didn't feel really good after that because obviously I had rated myself average and nobody else. Todos os dias eu passo pela porta comum e ontem foi um dia único e eu optei por passar pelo bonita. I wanted to go through the average door, but my mom just pulled me over to the beautiful door. <laughs> I'm 
was quite a triumphant feeling. It was like telling the world, I think I'm beautiful. I just wish more young. Okay. Uh, because of um, time constraints, I know I won't. Uh, I I would just stop here. And actually, I have quite a few uh, video to show, but um, you know, uh, because of time constraint, I would um, you know um 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 uh, skip them and move on to maybe uh uh, uh, uh the cultural part. Okay, because um, the culture is one of um, the topic for today, and for the three um, for the three sub dimensions of um, engagement, I emphasize um, uh, a lot in effective uh, engagement because I think especially in um, East Asia, okay, people uh, value a lot on relationship and guanxi. And so um, that, uh, 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 that lay a, a, a strong foundations to you know, uh, produce trust, especially when we want to activate people's engagement. So here, I, um, uh, when we talk about culture, actually, maybe I would just, um, uh, uh, quite a few, uh, quite a few uh, uh, um, um, definitions or approaches um, um, uh, defining culture. Uh, and among these um, four perspectives, that is like you know, um, learned behavior, shared values, uh, values, some um, dialects, and uh, culture in context. I emphasize more on the shared values. Okay, that defines some um, 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 you know um, culture as some um, the core value or norm among a group of individuals that share that shape and um, behaviors. But you know, when it comes to um, using um, 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 theories, half step, some six dimensional uh, culture, okay, uh, has been widely used to compare or to uh, uh, um, to to characterize national um, natures or differences, okay. And among these some um, six dimensional uh, cultures, I emphasize more on um, collectivism, but actually I put a question mark here is that because, you know, people from individualistic culture tend to regard themselves as independent of one another, but a prominent, prominent East Asian characteristic is the emphasis on social relations that I just mentioned to you. But the thing is that, you know, um, um, how people, you know, um, um, define group or collectivity basically is different. So, um, you know, um, I further to use, you know, uh, um, the perspective of um, relational, relationalism to conceptualize the concept of um, collectivism. Okay, and as I just previously um, uh, mentioned that people exist through and are defined by their relationship or guanxi to others. And when one person interact with other, the first question consider is what is the guanxi between us and how, is, how strong is our you know, interpersonal relationship. And the Chinese determined the extent of their relationship to different people before deciding on their obligations and patterns for interaction with them. So the reason that I want to emphasize this is that, you know, I am consider if there's any other way to further uh, 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 extend or uh, theorize a culturally sensitive model of engagement. So, so um, I um, 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 utilize again um, the so-called Guanxi theory, okay, uh, in um, 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 developing um, the model of um, the re uh, engagement. Okay, so please allow me to give one more uh, or two minutes, okay, to explain this to you. Um, the differentiation, the differential model of associations, you know, uh, can explain how I call the relationalism is because everyone stands at the center of the circle produced by his or own, uh, her own um, particular social ties. 
Okay, so as you can see that self is in the center, followed by family members and followed by the other um, uh, uh, um, social ties uh, identified by the commonalities of um, identities. People such as people share the common uh, um, blood or like, you know, uh, last names or education backgrounds, things like that. So again, going back to um, um, the theory of um, ABC model, I um, emphasize that relationship-based engagement should be considered as far as um, East Asian society or the cultures is, is concerned. And um, I would, you know, actually use some of the Examples happens in Japan, Taiwan, and mainland China, but because of time constraint, I think you know I will skip um the 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 examples by only illustrate one case. I believe that is some um, interesting. That is um what I call geosphere. Oh, sorry, what I call kin based kin based engagement that um, you know, illustrate, that was illustrated in the case in Taiwan. Okay, um, let me just um, get to skip all this to here, okay. So the case of um, the fourth nuclear power in Taiwan, okay. Um, the construction of um, the fourth nuclear power plant in Taiwan has been proposed over 30 or 40 years, but have not been successful because of the opposition of um, the site residents and um, the environmentalist. Okay. And um, um, the Taiwan, okay, the TPC, Taiwan Power Company, is the company in charge of communicating with some of the residents. Okay. But um, they have um, the communication campaigns has been a failure because of strong oppositions and strong, um, you know, um, 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 ideologies. Okay, so after the first stages of um, the failure, they changed their communication campaign into what I named as you know guanxi based engagement tactics. Okay, so they recruited. Gongliao, that is some construction site, the proposed construction site. The Gongliao village resident employees within the company to form a communication tax force. And then the communicators was, you know, were assigned to different areas of villages according to their kinship with other residents in those areas. And these communicators help with you know household chores and spend time with them, the members of their kinship groups. And knowledge about nuclear power was exchanges in casual conversations over a cup of tea, a chess game, or like you know, um, 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 a daily conversations. Okay. And um, these conversations, okay, uh, was engaged, okay, um, in private houses, temples, and other gatherings. Okay, gathering places. And let's look at this video to illustrate the case. In 1991, a decision has been made to build a nuclear power plant in Gongliao, a small fishing village. The Taiwan Power Company established the strategic communication task force to convince residents of the need for the plant. The task force was sure they would succeed, but encountered great resistance from the villagers. Nuclear power has many benefits. Construction of this plant will bring cleaner, cheaper energy to the village. Who are you? What do you want? Everyone is off fishing. I did not understand a word you said. Please leave. The communication project failed. The protests from villagers continued. The legislature quickly froze the funding for the plant's construction. The task force changed their approach by using Guanxi and kinship-based engagement. They recruited Gongliao village residents to form a communication task force. These communicators were assigned to different areas of the village according to their kinship with the residents. Li, the communicator who had experience working in the TPC, went to visit his aunt. He helped her repair some household appliances. When Li's uncle returned from fishing, they had dinner together. 
Why do you work for such a dangerous company? I understand your concerns. When I began working at the nuclear power plant 25 years ago, I felt the same. But as I worked there, my worries disappeared. In fact, nuclear power is among the safest and cleanest energy sources. The chance of an accident at a nuclear power plant is actually much lower than that of an airplane accident. Similar conversations occurred throughout the neighborhood, when Lee and his colleagues addressed the villagers' concerns over a cup of tea, a game of chess, or during household chores. These conversations happened in private houses, temples, and other gathering places. This strategy was a success. A public poll showed a significant decrease in villager opposition. And so the construction of the plant was authorized. In 1991... Okay, so, um, <laughs> so as you can see that... In 19... Okay, um, I think um, I will skip um, another piece in mainland China and come to um, kind of like um, the conclusion here. So, um, you know, when I uh, saw the ABC model engagement um, developed by um, Johnson and Taylor, I really find that excited because I think they, they are very good foundations for us to understand the different dimensions of engagement in terms of cognitive, affective and behavior. Okay, and, and then when I apply this um, model to, again, to the Chinese societies, you know, I've been thinking, you know, if there is any particular thing that can further um, 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 uh, um, to make um, this uh, model more effective. So um, I actually um, conducted um, some literature, you know, uh, finding the examples, especially the best practice or the effective, um, successful uh, uh, practices of um, communication or public relations um, in different uh, East Asian uh, countries or cultures or regions, okay, such as I just mentioned to you that, you know, mainland China and, and Japan, okay, and, and of course Taiwan, okay, um, you know, um, uh, the Chinese societies, okay. So I find that, that you know, um, the so called in a uh, relationship-based engagement has been very, very effective, okay? So I further, okay, I further um, 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 develop or extend um, the theory into a culturally sensitive model of engagement. So if you have any question, more questions about that, we can um, further discuss um, um, uh, in the Q&A section. So my, 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 uh, conclusive remarks here is that, you know, the ABC model of um, engagement potentially applies universally because it reflects human psychological and behavior attributes. But, okay, uh, culturally, specifically, okay, in East Asia, relationship or guanxi based engagement is recommended during you know, emergency or crisis time, because this lays a better foundation for trust and increased effectiveness of um, cognitive, affective, and behavior engagement. So that is some the some conclusive remarks uh, for the cultural sens uh, sensitive um, ABC model of engagement. Okay, so to conclude, okay. Uh, as I just mentioned that, you know, my major research program is to theorize um, management of um, strategic communication or public relations from the perspective of conflict management or crisis communication in Chinese context. And I believe that, um, I believe that, you know, what I have um, just um, 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 uh, suggest or introduced is, uh, you know, some something to, uh, illustrate uh, the theories or the um, studies that I've been doing for the past two or three decades. And this PowerPoint uh, um, shows some, you know, the models or the theories that I have um, been developing. Okay, so if you are interested, you know, you are uh, welcome to check them up. Uh, check, check them out, okay? Or, you know, you feel very, very free to contact me and we can further to um, 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 uh, maybe uh, explore or develop some kind of um, 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 collaborative research, 
across like cultures or like, you know, regions or like, you know, uh, uh, even disciplines. Okay, I think I will conclude my um, um, talk uh, for now and, you know, entertain questions from the audience. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, somebody want to start us off? I have some questions, but I'll wait. <laughs> question yes um hi i'm researching um doing some research in engagement and i'm particularly interested in how we engage around uh how governments in particular engage around uh public policy decisions that have negative consequences within the east asian context do you feel that there are some differences between democratic and non-democratic uh, political systems in how they uh, how political leaders have uh, used engagement is that something you've looked into um okay let me uh okay maybe let me answer the questions using this powerpoint okay um, I would say that um, since um, you are asking um, the contextual factors affect the effectiveness of engagement campaigns or in engagement strategies, right? So um, um, to answer your question, I think you know there have been quite a lot of um, 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 study going on to uh, explore of the political system, okay, the impact of the political system. And um, uh, quite a lot, you know, um, um, studies actually has, you know, studying the interaction between cultural, cultural factor with um, the political system. Because um, um, for example, in um, the three, Chi three Chinese societies, such as um, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and mainland China, Okay, they are situated in different uh, political systems or the like, media systems, but they are under the same uh, cultural traditions. We can, you know, coin it as um, like um, Confucian um, culture uh, 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 tradition. Okay, so um, um, my my answer to your question is not is that you know um, the well. The, the answer is not that self-evident or that simple because quite a lot contextual factors actually have um, you know, uh, combined to exert their, their um, uh, 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 effects, okay? So um, if we really want to single out the factors of um, like um, the political, political systems, okay? You will have to control like um, the, fact, the, the, the cultural factors. So actually I've been doing um, some um, um, studies, okay, on um, COVID-19, okay, on um, the, uh, uh, the three Chinese societies, okay, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and mainland China. And basically I would assume that, you know, um, the culture uh, traditions are similar, but you know um, um, the, the the political systems are or media systems are somehow di different. Okay, so I would um, I don't have um, a, a quick answers to you, but you know uh, my 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 take is that you know um, um, the answers could be uh, issue sensitive as well. For example, yeah. okay, emergency health issue. Or like you know, um, like um, you know, uh, corporate for profit mm -hmm. issues. Okay, I think they would also play some uh, uh, factors affecting the you know the the, the different e effects. Okay, so I I do not think there is a very uh, straightforward or very quick answers or short answers towards that. But I would really think that we will have to um, um, explore um, um, the. Uh, the intertwined contextual factors, such as, um, just as I mentioned, political systems, media systems, cultural systems, issues, issues, okay, so that, you know, we can 
uh, really clarify um, 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 the, the, the relationship and provide the answers only derived from um, political systems. And well, the, the reason I show you this um, figure is that, you know, um, um, I, I um, conduct some, um, conducted some case studies under um, the context of like emergency emergency uh, 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 responses or emergency management in terms of the effect of um, engagement campaign in different East Asian um, 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 regions. But, you know, I, um, I, I, for the case studies, you know, I, I cannot uh, answer your questions, you know, very, very straightforward. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. Um, Thank you so much for telling us about your uh, PhD and generally your research journey. And it was very impressive that the outcome of your PhD thesis had a high level of citation. Um, but my question is about your recent research about uh, kinship engagement, uh, which was also very interesting how they, they used a different approach in, in uh, a different context and how effective it was. Um, my question is about the ethics. Do you think, although it was uh, effective, do you think it's ethical? Because for example, if I know that my cousin comes to a family gathering and talks on behalf of an organization and promotes uh, a commercial thing, um, instead of having a, a genuine conversation with me, I would not like that. Um, do you think it's also ethical or, um, not only this approach, but, but other approaches, because uh, from my understanding in um, the Eastern context, um, public relations might have, might include more informal practices because you, know, you, 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 you need to, um, uh, you need to use those public relations strategies in your informal relationships. Okay, this is a very good question. Okay, let me answer in this way. Um, for the Thai Power Company case, okay, uh, first of all, um, if we define, you know, the definition of ethics, okay, since um, there, there have been quite a lot of uh, heated debates about, uh, on if public relations, if persuasion is ethic, is ethical. Okay, because a lot of people think that, you know, persuasion actually is an, an ethical practice. Okay, but um, some um, scholars, okay, they um, 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 indicated that um, the bottom line of um, persuasion to be ethical is that you have to disclose your intention. That everybody knows that, you know, you are under the context of um, persuasion and or you are under the intention from the persuaders that he's doing the persuasion, okay? So this disclosure actually is a very important thing. And for the type of company uh, case, I think um, it is uh, quite interesting that, okay, first of all, they, um, they, they utilize their, okay, they, um, okay, how can I say that? Okay, the communicators are from the TPC company, okay? And actually um, they are um, the relatives of um, the residents, okay? And everybody knows about that. And the second one is that, the, the, second, the second thing is that, you know, when they have um, like a daily conversation, they actually do not really, um, they, they, they have their extent because they have their stance because everybody knows that you are the employees from the TPC uh, company. So, um, so, and you can see the result. I, I think the result is very interesting is that, you know, the percentage of a green uh, 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 nuclear power construction actually does not increase. What increased is the level of opposition. Okay, so which means that actually people start to rethink if um, the nuclear power is as horrible as I expected. So I, I think this is some, something um, 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 interesting in terms of the, the result. But what I want to emphasize that is that, you know, um, um, I actually, this is a real act, actual case study and um, I do not um, 
call this is um, this exercise is some like you know um, ethical, but at least I think um, um, the com the conversation is under you know a uh, uh, transparent or you know like a um, uh, uh, um, a context that people know that you are coming here to maybe to try to persuade us. Okay, and as you as you just say that you know a lot of um, projects of uh, public relations in East Asia is um, executed or you know exercised in um, informal projects. Well, uh, I agree, and actually that is um, that is one of um, the major uh, reasons that okay, public relations actually now has a very very negative connotation. People even do not want to name their department as public relations. Okay, they would rather call themselves uh, strategic communication, uh, digital communication, integrated marketing communication, things like instead of public relations. So actually, I really think that worries me as a public relations educators. So that, for example, in, um, okay, let me give you this example, like um, the, the public relations program in Chinese University of Hong Kong is named as a you know, program of um, corporate communication. And in City University of Hong Kong, it is named as you know, integrated marketing communication. None of them, um, the, 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 the naming, okay, is entitled as some um, public relations. So I would, I fully agree with you that um, 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 the, 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 the unethical or like, you know, the informal practice, okay, or the, you know, um, uh, all these um, negative connotations actually is damaged or destroying the future of public relations. And that worries me as um, educators and a lot of um, my colleagues. Yes, yeah. So I, I really think that, you know, that is um, the area that all of us, you know, should um, work the best for it. And um, um, I, I think Maureen knows that, you know, um, what I've been um, 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 advocate or, you know, when I, I, I deliver talks a lot in the mainland China and the Chinese society a lot um, for the past decades. And one of the major, one of the major uh, topic that I cover is about trust. It's about trust because I think trust building, okay, and building trustful relationship between the, an organization and its stakeholders. I think it is the most important um, 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 direct, directions that, um, you know, um, practitioners, educators, or scholars should, you know, uh, work so that, you know, public relations would have a better future. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I have one question. Yes. Uh, Public relations is uh, uh, incre increasingly embracing uh, pub public centric perspectives now. So, uh, how do you, a public centric perspective where you, you are, you know, uh, putting publics at the center of public relations? You mean publicity? Are you, are no, you talking? Public, so, when we talk about public relations, you know, we have organizations and publics. Oh, yes. Okay. Increasingly, we are talking about you know, uh, public centric perspectives, yeah, where, yeah. you know, we are theorizing from the perspective of publics rather than organizations. Yeah. How do you think, you know, uh, Eastern societies are going to, you know, approach this, you know, this big shift from organization centric to public centric perspectives in public relations? Okay, that is also a very, very good question. Um, I would um, answer these questions from two perspectives. Okay, traditionally, just as um, you know, since I did not have time to go into um, the half step and six cultural dimensions, but basically, uh, East Asian countries or cultures has been most uh, uh, often uh, characterized as having the characteristics of high power distance. Okay, so to answer your question, I would say that, you know, from a traditional sense, I would consider there is some hinders, okay, there are obstacles, okay, to, uh, to take um, the public perspective as, you know, one of um, the, or the major approaches when we practice public relations. Okay, I, I would think traditionally, uh, there's an obstacle, but on the other hand, 
I would consider that you know there is some um, an opportunity for the change because of the digital era, because of um, the, the development of um, um, technology, te technology. Because um, you know, um, uh, as you you all know that you know, um, um, like um, men in China, okay, um, the the internet has been drastically increasingly de developed. Okay, and we all know that um, 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 uh, internet online communication uh, has been characterized as you know much decentralized. Okay, between the power structures between the organization and the publics, so we can see okay technology wise. Okay, even we have um the what I just called the, the barriers from um um the traditional or the structure thing. Okay, or the culture thing. Okay, um, the development of technology actually uh, paved the way um, for the direction, for that direction that is um, a public centric um, um, perspective to evolve. So I would say that, you know, um, kind of like um, 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 two strengths, okay, pulling up together and fighting together, but we can still see some bright features there. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question uh, since we have Marine, uh, Michael here, and also uh, with Christine here. So for, um, I think uh, throughout the whole talk, um, the main theme is that using the, um, the aspect of face and uh, um, um, a favor, we can give you know, Western theories another perspective uh, in terms of uh, OPR and later on the engagement. But for dialogic theory, I think um, we didn't really ex uh, really explain like how the favor and um, uh, face can can integrate can be integrated into the theoretical framework. And because uh, dialogic theory is so norm normative, um, and does the requirements of dialogue to be uh, you know uh, equal in in terms of power just Eliminate, eliminates the possibility that a face and uh, a favor can be integrated into dialogic theory. So it's more like a question from Marie and Michael in that sense. So does that counter each other out? Michael? <laughs> um, well, see, I actually, I think one of the things I often try to explain early on to students is the power of the relationship. You know, that um, it's a lot harder to say no to somebody who you have a relationship with than it is to say no to somebody you don't have a relationship with. And I think that that's one of the features of dialogue is that we do have dialogue between groups that don't always agree and that sort of thing. But at the same time, long term dialogue, you know, consistent relationships are going to lead to trust. They're going to lead to a desire to. I, I think, you know, that there is a risk because there is a desire to maybe conform and to sort of help each other out and, and, you know, because of the relationship, but that's inevitable. And I think that's probably not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And I would say remember that dialogue is an orientation. So uh, it's, it's the orientation that you take to a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so that's the really important part. So an outcome of dialogue might be, right, or it might be, uh, you know, the, the kinship tie, I mean, there's other, there's ties as well. So I don't think they're incompatible. If you, if you treat dialogue as an orientation that structures how you interact with others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, maybe I can add one point. Um, I think that, you know, that uh, dialogic um, theory um, um, is developed, uh, especially in, um, you know, out of um, the digital uh, um, era. And actually, I've been asked questions um, uh, from the audience uh, when I talk about like um, the uh, culturally sensitive um, model of um, engagement, um, the applicability. So you know, they you know, one one audience asked me that you know if um, that the model work equally uh, uh, online, online, yes. And then my answer is that actually my um, my my. Existing literature, okay, suggests that actually um, the so-called um, or or the guanxi or kinship-based um, uh, engagement uh, engaged mm -hmm. model of um, engagement, okay, basically would um, reduce some um, the applicability online because um, the, the the relationship there, 
okay, it's it's just a little bit different or a, a lot different, okay, in um the the, the real world uh, compared with um, the real world. So I I would say that I would say that okay, um, now we might have to consider to you know um uh, especially what well, I can only speak for like an East Asian uh, culture or the, the countries okay so when we talk about like effectiveness of populations um campaign uh, engagement campaign strategic communication campaign maybe we have to take into account the the context okay is that online or offline so if it goes to if it comes to the offline okay so what I've been talking about like um face and favor kinship like this kind of um, um, a, a structure, okay, we ha have, have to really take into account. Otherwise, otherwise, I would think that we might be a little bit ignorant. Okay, that is my take. But you know, when we come to like a digital world, that would be a, 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 a universally or like, you know, a, a different world with um, the, the offline um, uh, relationship, yeah. I just had one, you know, it may be quick if possible, but one of the things I see a lot of with my students is this sense that public relations is this business tool, management tool, organizational tool, and there's so little understanding of one of the things you showed with, the, with that video, you know, the Dove video with the two signs is just the power of words, right? And near the end of that, where you cut it off, this one woman, it looks like she walks up and then she's like, no, she walks away, right? She's not even <laughs> going to go through one of the two doors and make the choice. She's going to go find another door to get in. And I think that that talks about how powerful we are. And we talk about encroachment and how, you know, mar marketing and wow. advertising, um, but I don't even think it's an issue of encroachment because there's a great deal of this sense I get that public relations job is to serve management and organizations with no understanding of the power of all these other things that we can do that you've described. Yeah, I, um, I, I fully agree with you. So um, I really think that, you know, uh, public relations is not only uh, serve from the purpose of an organization, but also serve from, uh, the, you know, for the bigger, like, you know, society. So the reason that, you know, I um, provide that uh, video, actually I have quite a few um, a very interesting video or the campaigns that um, that speak for the power of strategic communication or like engagement from the perspective of, of society as a whole. And as you can see that when we talk about like a cognitive engagement, we actually would like to like, you know, um, 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 deliver or like, you know, um, send out uh, some positive um, notions or some positive, um, 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 or, or, you know, from the uh, psychological, uh, psycholo uh, psychology perspe perspective, they, they say that, you know, to generate like, you know, positive psychology. So I think public relations can help in that regard, okay, in terms of like cognitive engagement, as long as, you know, we can um, generate something really beneficial to um, the people and the, the public. And as we can see that, you know, in, in the, in, in, in the COVID-19 issue, okay, public relations are actually doing some very, very good things. Okay, for example, you know, um, you know to, um, to, to in, in, in regard to like a disinformation, misinformation, things like that as well. Okay. Okay. Oh, I think we should probably wrap it up because you've been almost, you know, two hours now and it's probably time for you to get lunch. And I want to thank you for being here. It was very nice to hear you put all those ideas together for us. <laughs> thank you very much. The pleasure is definitely mine. And, you know, I do hope that, you know, uh, we can see each other in person mm -hmm. in the near future. Yeah, hopefully next year I stay in Paris.